All right, lady, it is top secret time Open from the, the vault. vault. Open it. Yeah, all right, so first up, we're working on all of our little characters. Yes. And this is the latest one, uh, world premiere. This is Keyboard. And uh, I demanded the double click. If, you, if, you, if you're going to get a Circuit Python powered keyboard, know this will be one of the friendly uh, helpers that does things with you. This is Keyboard. Um, say hi to Keyboard. Hi, Keyboard. Next up, what's this? Um, I just have been whipping up a couple of STEM IQT boards. So, this is a very popular GPIO expander chip, and I thought it would make uh, for a great. Um, STEM IQT board. I mean, these are like super low cost, very, very popular. Um, there's also a 16 bit version, but I really like this like very simple 8 bit version. Okay. And then we have some uh, sneak peek videos. We're going to play them back to back and then we're going to see you on the other side. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Hey, I'm making more progress on our iSpy boards. That is, uh, you know, we make a lot of TFTs and OLEDs and stuff, and they have all these pins, so many pins. Well, DF Robot made this uh, cute little interface. Um, that uses a flex connector to basically replicate all of these pins. And so it's really easy with this way to um, add a TFT screen if your board has the matching connector. So I'm testing it with their board because I know they got the pin out, right? Let's see. Oh, there you go. And that's the logo that you and Bruce came up with. I spy with my little eye. A really easy way to attach TFTs. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Hey, I just put together a prototype for my QT2040 Trinky. Uh, so this is a Raspberry Pi RP2040 with eight megabytes of flash. Um, there's crystal, a little NeoPixel, and then two side buttons. This is the reset button, and this is the boot uh, button. And then at the end, there's a STEM IQT connector, and this is STEM IQT sized, right? It's like the same size, one of these sensors. So I have this uh, over here plugged into my computer as a little demo, and then on my computer, it's showing that, yeah, it's, it's reading from the BME 680. And then um, I did the cute trick that Pimerini came up with where the boot button is also a user button. So when I press this, you can see the red LED turns on. And the idea is that um, with a little bit of mechanical assistance, a couple of uh, plastic standoffs, you would have this mount together as like one little piece. It's a very handy sensor input for any computer with USB-C. We've been working on adding the Funhouse board, which is included with Adabox 18, the Adafruit Whippersnapper, the no-code IoT platform for Adafruit I.O. And it has a bunch of built-in buttons, which is nice. It actually has three one underneath this tab. And if you press the button, we already have it configured for the button up. It will show its status on Whippersnapper. So I'm going to show you adding a new button because I want to read the value of the middle button. So you'd click New Component push button, scroll down to button select, click create component, and then we can simply press the middle button. And that's it. The project bundle feature that was recently added to the Learn Guide system simplified the process of setting up your device for specific projects. Another helpful resource in Learn Guides are screenshots like these that show the necessary files on the CircuitPy drive. As libraries get updated, sometimes the screenshots need to be updated to reflect the changes. We were able to reuse the data collected by the bundling scripts to generate screenshots that look like a file explorer showing the project files and all required libraries. These screenshots are created using Pillow. It's a friendly fork of PIL, the Python imaging library. Jeff integrated this utility with GitHub Actions, so now it runs every time there's a change to any CircuitPython Learn Guide code. When it runs, it generates images for every project at once and pushes them into the Learn Guide repo. These new auto-generated screenshots will get integrated into the Learn Guide system soon. And last up, you have a demo you're going to show. That's this is, right. This is a big deal. Okay. So on the overhead, I've been working on the keyboard. More keyboard. So getting the OLED working. You mean? Yeah, the keyboard. It's a keyboard. It's a keyboard. And I got the rotary encoder. You can see it's running CircuitPython. So, so far, so good. Uh, so I've got like the Web A, oh, there you go. Um, the Web A of the PCB going, but I'm going to make some updates. I'm going to change uh, the USB-C location. I'm going to change the OLED to be a plug-in OLED. And I think I'm going to go move the buzzer because actually I'm not so into it. Um, but uh, so far, so good. Keyboard is occurring. All right. And that is top secret this week.